In this example, we are looking for the inverse Laplace transform of f of s and the final value of that function. As you know, there are two ways to find the, the final value of f of s. The first one is to apply the final value theorem to f of s directly in the s domain. And the second way is to find the inverse Laplace of f of s first, f of t, and then find the limit of f of t when time tends to infinity. Let's try both ways and to compare the results. First, let's find the inverse Laplace of f of s. As you can see here, this form will not be found in any table of Laplace transform. First, we need to decompose this function into smaller fractions that we can find in a table. To do the partial fraction decomposition of this, we first need to know to find the partial fractions that will that can be combined to, to form f of s. And for this type of denominator, we can write the, that f of s can be written in the form of a over s plus b over s plus 2 plus c over s plus 2 squared. Now let's find the common denominator for this expression. In this case, the common denominator here is s times s plus 2 squared. s times s plus 2 squared divided by s is s plus 2 squared times a. For b, we have b times s times s plus 2. Uh, s plus 2 squared divided by s plus 2 is s plus 2 times s. And for c, we simply have c times s. Our job now is to find a, b, and c. But we know that this expression is equal to the original f of s. Now the denominators here can be cancelled because they are equal. And now we can group the terms with s squared, s, and s to the power of 0. Let's expand this equation first. If you expand the top here, starting with the first term, we have a times s squared plus 4s plus 4. Second term gives bs squared plus 2bs. And the last term gives cs. And this is equal to 1. Terms that multiply s squared are a and b. So we can write that a plus b, in this case, equals to the coefficients of s squared on this side of the equation. That's 0. Now for coefficients of s, from the first part, we have 4s. Here we have 2b. Sorry, here we have 2a. This should have been 2a, 2a, 2b, and c. And this is equal to the coefficient of s on the left, the right side. That is 0 again. Finally, s to the power of 0. That's 1. Here we have 4a. And on this side here, we have 1. And here we have a system of three equations to solve to find, for, to find a, b, and c. From the last expression, we can get a. a is 1 fourth. If a is 1 fourth, from the first, we have b as negative 1 over 4. And now looking at the second equation here, c is negative 4a plus 2, negative 2b, minus 2b. a is 1 fourth, so this is negative 1. b is negative 1 fourth, so this is plus 1 half. Negative 1 plus 1 half is negative 1 over 2. So here you have another coefficients of a, b, and c. Which means that our expression, 
f of s can now be written in the form of a one fourth times one over s plus b negative one fourth times one over s plus two and plus c negative one half times one over c plus two square uh, s plus two square and now each of these fractions here can be found in a table of laplace transform if you now take the laplace the inverse laplace f of t can be written as one fourth the inverse of one over s is one so this is one fourth the inverse of one over s plus two is the exponential of negative 2t and the inverse of negative uh, of 1 over s plus 2 squared is 1 half t times the exponential of negative 2t here is the time response f of t The final value of f of t is easy to calculate in time domain, is the limit when t tends to infinity of f of t. When t tends to infinity, this term tends to zero, exponential of a very large negative number is zero. This term also tends to zero, we are left with one fourth. If you didn't want to calculate the inverse Laplace, we could have found the final value from the original expression in the S domain by using the final value theorem. We know that the limit of t tending to infinity of f of t is the same as the limit when s tends to zero of s times f of s, which equals to the limit when s tends to zero of one over s plus two squared. This s cancels the s on the function. This s comes from the theorem. The result of this calculation now, when s tends to zero, we are left with one over four, which is the same value we found through the time domain. And that's the final value of the function f of s or f of t.